these gender trendsetters. And we'll be looking into quite an amazing um, set of um, panelists who will be updating us on the news and highlights on their work. Just before that, I would like to share some housekeeping uh, rules. For the smooth running of the session, we would like to uh, uh, inform you to that attendees microphones are muted. And if you would like to intervene, to please raise your hand. Once you're given the floor, the moderator will unmute your microphone. We will take questions through Q&A and chat. Please use these options. You can access the chat and Q&A by clicking the relevant button in the bottom bar of the Zoom interface. interface. The session is live streamed on the WISIS Process Facebook channel. We also uh, invite all of you to use this opportunity and promote your presence and invite your communities and networks to join us through Facebook. The recording of the session will be available on the events page of the WISIS Forum 2023 website soon after the end of the session. This will also be an opportunity for all of you to learn more about the upcoming WISIS Forum 2023. So the WISIS process uh, affirms the importance of promoting and maintaining gender equality and women empowerment, guaranteeing the inclusion of women in the emerging global ICT society. This is process and this is forum has been trailblazing this uh, particular task and a challenge since the very beginning. And we have make, made a lot of breakthroughs you know, on this. One of them is the creation of the this is gender transgender community. They are our ambassadors, our amplified voices for all the work that we do for the gender mainstreaming and gender equality using technology and ICTs, empowering women, young girls as well. Each trendsetter present today and many more out there has chosen a specific challenge or pledge to advance gender mainstreaming efforts in the field of ICTs. And once again, we are pleased to be joined today by a group of them that will be updating the business community about their latest activities. Let me first give the floor to Mr. Malcolm Johnson, the Deputy Secretary General of International Telecommunication Union, and of course, one of the business gender tank setters for his welcoming remarks. Mr. Johnson, please. Thank you very much, uh, Vladimir, and uh, good afternoon, uh, good evening, uh, good morning for some, no doubt. Uh, thanks very much for joining us uh, to, for this uh, this talk. Uh, with my fellow um, WISIS gender trendsetters. Nice to see uh, you all with us. Thanks for joining. So at this uh, year's WISIS forum, we, we all made pledges to strengthen gender equality and women's empowerment and to guarantee the inclusion of women in the emerging global information society. And I personally uh, pledged to work towards solutions for gender inclusion and uh, the full integration of gender equality in the digital world. Globally, the ability to connect uh, remains profoundly unequal with the uh, women trailing behind men in internet access in most countries, but especially in uh, the developing countries. Empowering uh, women and girls to play an active role in the digital sector is important, uh, not only uh, to achieve the SDG Goal 5, uh, but also to allow them to meet their full potential and to contribute to the development of their country's uh, economy. At ITU, we seek to become a model organization for gender equality and to use the ICTs to empower both uh, women and men. Uh, I've been in ITU uh, as an elected official now for 16 years, but as uh, a delegate goes back to uh, almost 40 years. And um, I've seen a lot of changes, of course, in that time, but nothing more than the increased uh, prominence of women in the ITU, I'm pleased to say. And that's uh, especially so in, in the delegations coming to our meetings, uh, but also in, in the staff. We have far more uh, women working at the professional level in ITU now than 
than we did uh, 16 years back. And uh, of course, uh, going up uh, as they progress uh, to higher and higher levels in the organization. And of course, uh, recently had the election of uh, Doreen Bogdan Martin to uh, be the next uh, Secretary General. And that will be the first time ITU in its long history has had a woman um, Secretary General. So things are definitely changing for the better. And gender mainstreaming, of course, is central to the WISIS process and is a cross-cutting issue in, in all the WISIS action lines. The upcoming uh, WISIS forum uh, next year will include a special track on ICTs and gender mainstreaming. So I invite uh, you all to contribute to, to that track and, and in the open consultation process, which is now ongoing on how to um, organize the event. We're aiming, uh, as always, for a 50-50, at least, uh, gender participation. And uh, I'm pleased to say we, we virtually achieved that uh, this year, but perhaps not uh, in terms of uh, leadership level. We have a lot of ministers participating, and um, a lot of those ministers were, were women, in fact, uh, and very active ministers at that. So um, we hope very much uh, to see uh, things uh, improving, and especially with the help of uh, the WISIS gender trendsetters, which we have with us today, to, to amplify uh, the actions uh, we're taking and to expand women's opportunities, uh, their voice, um, their leadership uh, in the whole process. So I'd like to call uh, on your support uh, for this initiative uh, and to be part of the gender mainstreaming activities. Uh, the WISA stock taking repository of women in technology is essential to uh, the networking, collaboration, and the possible uh, mentorships that are needed to provide opportunities for, for women and girls to reach their full potential. I'd like to say that um, just uh, this morning, I had the pleasure of attending a, a team meeting of the, our WISIS team, uh, led by Jitanjali. Um, and uh, it was a very nice event. We had uh, all the, the interns that help the team. Uh, each year, we have about 15 interns coming. Um, these are, are very often um, uh, students uh, in their, doing their masters, having completed their uh, first degree. Um, it's nice to see so much enthusiasm there uh, to, to help us uh, with this event, which uh, really is exists to bring the benefits of the technology to everyone everywhere. And uh, we're certainly more than 50-50 uh, when it comes to the gender in, in, in that team, I, I can tell you. So I look forward to hearing uh, testimonies from um, from you all and uh, and listening to uh, how we can further uh, play our role in improving uh, this challenge that we all have facing us. Many thanks to all the uh, uh, panelists for being with us today and uh, look forward to a very exciting exchange. Thank you very much. Thank you, Malcolm. Uh, thank you for sharing this um, historical perspective as well on how gender mainstreaming has been improving in the last two decades, at least since the establishment of the VISIS process. We have all witnessed uh, the changing uh, of this paradigm and uh, the shift, and um, we are improving also the 50-50 participation of the VISIS forum. And as you, as you rightly said, uh, the VESIS team is definitely one of the forerunners. As you can see around the table, uh, most of our colleagues um, are working towards the gender mainstreaming already. Once again, thanks for uh, your um, role in leading this and uh, playing an important part uh, for all these years. Uh, and uh, we look forward to hearing more from you and to having you as a um, gender trendsetter in the future. 
Also with us today, I would like to welcome our colleague uh, David Estorti from UNESCO, uh, who is um, here to present on behalf of another Visit Gender Trendsetter, Dr. Tafi Gelasi, the Assistant Director General from UNESCO. A sister UN agency who has been together with ITU from the very beginning, leading this business process uh, as a co-organizer and coordinator. And um, we would like to hear more from Davide on the UNESCO's activities on gender mainstreaming and perhaps uh, how does he see the role of the business process and the business forum in this effort. Davide, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I'd like to start by uh, repeating that UNESCO is part of this uh, because uh, we believe that uh, all forms of discrimination that are based on gender are a violation of human rights and uh, are, is barrier to the achievement of the, of the goals of the international community. And uh, our, our line is clear that women and men enjoyed equal opportunities, right to choice, capabilities, power and, and knowledge, and they are equal citizens. And this is the basis where we are fully engaged in this uh, uh, endeavor and this uh, uh, also role and uh, this initiative uh, that uh, we, we have today. So in, uh, in, this, uh, in this area and in a different uh, um, mandate area of UNESCO, UNESCO is uh, uh, endeavoring to uh, towards gender equality and just to give some examples maybe it's uh, to what is uh, happening nowadays with, uh, with in the last year let's say uh, according in the business process kind of uh, um, areas i'd like to mention for example uh, uh, our work which is uh, of course uh, done in in the in the digital area Particularly, and this goes uh, in, uh, in 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 several ways. In, uh, for example, uh, the um, um, work on STEM education. So uh, that is uh, uh, was already uh, a, a, a an area in which UNESCO was active in the last few years, uh, uh, starting from uh, the reports that UNESCO has been has been doing. Uh, one of the reports you may re recall uh, is. Uh, uh, cracking the code is uh, talking about the uh, approach to uh, STEM education, so science, technology, engineering, and mathematics uh, for girls and women, and the effect that uh, uh, this uh, approach has in uh, in different ways, including in the development of technology, because uh, uh, gender equality is not uh, is a, is a is something which goes all across, let's say, the, the it's shaping, is a, is, a, is a barrier to shaping the uh, future of the, of the technology and our future of the societies. Uh, and uh, uh, how these, uh, these effects are uh, actually uh, be, can be found in the um, uh, development of technologies like uh, uh, artificial intelligence, for example. And we were already uh, mentioning uh, um, the uh, bias that are introduced, for example, in uh, in uh, uh, artificial intelligence systems uh, in um, in various ways, and uh, now that uh, the UNESCO has uh, um, adopted a um, recommendation on uh, uh, the ethics of artificial intelligence, uh, this how this this can be uh, let's say addressed, and uh, in specifically for uh, artificial intelligence, I'd like also to note uh, one. Uh, a uh, piece of work which was uh, uh, done uh, this year, uh, which is about the uh, what are the effect uh, of um, uh, artificial intelligence uh, on the working lives of women. It's a report which is done in a partnership with the OECD and the uh, IDB and uh, is um, uh, pointing up to some, some actions that uh, uh, must be uh, addressed uh, the soonest, uh, being the reskilling and upskilling of women workers, because uh, while artificial intelligence is uh, a progress, uh, but uh, this uh, progress is uh, changing the uh, labor market, is demanding of in increasing demand of new skills, uh, and uh, we we this has to be addressed to prepare the works for the future. 
uh, then uh, in, again encouraging uh, then women to uh, um, uh, undertake studies in in STEM as we mentioned already, and also um, uh, checking if the on the different uh, contextualizations because uh, um, gender equality is not the same uh, um, everywhere. If there is a um there are different uh, contests countries uh, uh, cultures gender norms etc and uh, this has to be uh, done all across the, the, the span and also um, um that uh, this kind of approaches has to be uh, addressed by the different stakeholders uh, governments private sector uh, technical communities uh, academia that uh, need to engage in these kind of issues for, uh, for, imp for um, improving and also taking responsibility for the development of technology uh, tools and systems. Um, then, uh, sorry, <laughs> I would like just to mention one last thing, which is uh, also that uh, is, um, it's not only, uh, let's say, technology, I just to mention also um, a, a report, which is also was done this year about uh, culture. It's called uh, Reshaping Policies for Creativity and is uh, about uh, gender equality one step forward and two steps back and is uh, pointing uh, um, the, the freedom of creativity and uh, how uh, you know, gender equality is uh, actually um, a, 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 an issue to address uh, in terms of the culture, uh, the development of the culture, cultural systems and platforms for uh, uh, creators, uh, artists, uh, and works, uh, workers in the in the cultural system. Thank you, Davide, very much. I do invite uh, all participants to take a look at this report. It seems that there is something that uh, is uh, of concern, uh, and hopefully technology and its development can address it properly. As we have heard, there are other initiatives at UNESCO that, um, as Davide mentioned, uh, we are looking forward to see its outcomes. Gender mainstreaming is a cross-cutting uh, issue uh, and it goes uh, through all other activities that we do. Uh, as we have seen, uh, all UN agencies are working together, of course, uh, with our sister agency, UN Women, uh, to address these issues properly. Uh, we at the ITU have been you know, also make, making these efforts, but together uh, at the VISIS Forum, I believe, uh, as the UN platform and the global umbrella that brings multi-stakeholder, uh, you know, attendees and participants, we can really, you know, take a, a better look and understanding of the issues that are going around. So once again, uh, thank you for joining us, Davide. Just before we go to the next speaker, I would just like to um, uh, inform everyone that uh, ITU, UNESCO and other stakeholders are working towards uh, launching uh, an additional this is special prize on indigenous languages preservation and revitalization it will soon be available on our business forum website i do invite all of you to uh, follow and promote this very important topic uh, and the use of icts in um, in this effort our next speaker uh, is miss may lin fang uh, chair and co-founder of people centered internet and a long time this is stakeholder. Uh, welcome, uh, Maylene. I would like to ask you if you could update us on the latest work uh, being undertaken today mm -hmm. by the organization that you lead uh, and its latest work to advance 50 50 trendsetters. Uh, sure. Can you hear me? I want to just make sure my, it's working properly. Um, so I shared my screen. We at the People Centered Internet are identifying this transition from formal to informal, from physical to include immaterial, from membership in an industrial society to stewardship for people, life, and planet. And women must lead the way. I have recently been um, uh, co-chair of the UN Commission on the Status of Women uh, report for next year. Um, it has a wonderful uh, set of recommendations, which will be discussed by the 193 countries. But it was after I um, attended that, that I realized that this change, this transition from uh, the 
formal world to the informal world was happening. And for us as women, our voices, we have had difficulty expressing because we are so involved with the immaterial world about caring, about sharing, about all these milestones that almost nobody else seems to recognize. How many hugs have you had today? And um, I see that the digital transition is coming towards us to measure the things that we care about and the statement that not everything we measure counts and not everything that counts can be measured. Well, as we begin to measure the immaterial world, as we begin to cre create registries of digital assets, much, much more of what we as women have been saying is important in life, needs to be considered, will be considered. I leave you with this final thought. The formal economy that's measured with dollars only represents what's done almost outside the home. Imagine if we can start tracking all of our activities in home, in social life, in family, as well as the formal economy, how much better would we be allocating our resources? How much better would we be stewarding our planet? How much better would we be offering equal opportunity for prosperity for future generations? Thank you. Thank you, Maylin. Uh, thanks again for readdressing that um, we are trying to measure, we are trying to you know, take account. KPI is important to be set up, but we need to go beyond that and to really uh, um, make sure that the message that we have, the feeling that is around, that is, um, you know, the, the overall uh, understanding of this issue is uh, well addressed and you know, spread and that we should all work uh, towards this goal. We will look into uh, options and opportunities. Uh, ICTs are definitely helping us in this. Things are changing. Some of them uh, have to be uh, a bit more improved the way they are changing. But you know, it's, it, 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 this is all uh, lessons learned. And I do hope that uh, we will be um, good students and make sure that we uh, learn fast and implement uh, not based on our own mistakes, but on the mistakes of the previous generations. Thank you once again for being with us. Um, also with us, uh, Ms. Yvette Ramos, president of uh, Women Y, uh, an, an old uh, friend and stakeholder of this process uh, who's been working with us here locally, based in Geneva for so many, many years. Uh, welcome Yvette. Uh, as we understand, um, you are involved in the, as a gender trendsetter in the Commission for the Status of Women process in the UN Women, uh, and the next meeting is planned for March 2023. Could you please share with us uh, what are the suggestions that uh, you are putting forward? Yeah. What are the key messages that you plan to um, highlight at this meeting? Yes, thank you so much. First, uh, thank you very much to give me again the opportunity to uh, uh, give some news and updates, and I really like first to uh, a focus on the four main activities that we had since we last met uh, the WISIS in uh, Geneva. We did four key activities, presence at UN events, I'll come back to that, workshops for kids, and development of a gender equality plan in one uh, engineering faculty. We're very proud of that. And uh, the Women by Academy that we did uh, organize last month uh, in Benin. So, Presence at two major UN events, we uh, had the chance to present a paper, Women in STEM, Science, Technology, Engineering, Mass in Europe, at the Science Summit, organized on the margin of the UN General Assembly in September. So this was a great workshop of 90 minutes, and we had a lot of inputs and outputs from that. We also were with a strong delegation at the COP27, and just come back two days ago, we had 22 delegates of Women VI and Swiss Engineering Geneva from 15 uh, different countries, and we had youth very much present in our delegation. Uh, the second axis, the workshops that we did uh, organize, we are still organizing, by the way, uh, it at primary classes level on STEM and gender issues. 
Uh, it's named Kids Vi, and we really would like to have uh, at next visit session, as we did propose, leaders or the delegations at WISIS to get uh, going with this electrical game that we have and that uses their digital basic skills. We hope to do that. Just in Geneva, 30 classes, it's represented 700 kids, boys and girls, to whom we do present uh, games on breaking gender stereotypes in STEM. So it's very successful and the state of Geneva is helping us in finance of that. The third axis, as I said, uh, a workshop we organize in two steps, July and September, three days. If you want to have a gender equality plan aligned with the uh, European guidelines, we can do that. And we did that with EPF School of Engineers. That is a school based in France and Africa. They have four locations. And we did that uh, with the referees in gender that they have in the different locations and also the board of administration. No, now they have a gender equality plan that is actually mandatory when we want to, uh, as an academia, get funds on, on research funds from Europe, in fact, uh, as this is a mandatory criteria since the beginning of this year. The fourth axe is the Women via Academy that I've spoken already about. In October this year, uh, last month, we were in Cotonou, Benin, under the leadership of the Ministry of Digital Affairs that you know very well at ITU, Mrs. Aurélie adam Soule, who is really our leader in that. We went there with four mentors of Women Vi to facilitate the three days workshops and help 20 women entrepreneurs in digital. Uh, they were aged 19 to 52, average uh, year, 28 years old. We help them pitch their project of business uh, that is basically bringing technology into a socioeconomic sector for the development of their country with a sustainable approach. So the same ladies did present their project and three of them won the prizes. And of course, they will be closely followed by the national stakeholders in their business sectors, namely agriculture, tourism and health. And we took also the opportunity while we were in the country to train this group of 20 ladies to facilitate the Kids Vi project for the younger ones. We focused only on girls aged 12 to 15 to raise awareness on climate adaptation through technology. So it was a great uh, moment for us as well. So with that, of course, we wish to say that it's very hard to achieve uh, all this at the same time on the field and at UN level. So yes, we will be, uh, I hope, uh, at the UN uh, Women, as we are trying to be also at the UN Water, that is at the same time in March in uh, New York. And we hope to do it with your help. Uh, we are asking for a special accreditation that we really hope to have, and not only to be there as observers, but also to be there and organize a side event with you and all the gender trendsetters who would be interested, of course. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Yvette. Uh, thanks for sharing uh, the updates. Thanks also for you know the call that you have shared that um, we should all look into. I do agree that uh, we cannot all do and be present on the ground level and on the global level at the same time, but this is why the, this group exists and we should be helping each other. Uh, we would love to, you know, uh, amplify your voice uh -huh. at the Vesis yeah. Forum, uh, all these different activities that you do around the world. We also like to play games, especially if it's uh, <laughs> towards this important goal. Uh, at the same time, we do uh, invite you to amplify the voice of the gender and ICT special track at the Vesis Forum at the, uh, the meet, next meeting of uh, the Commission of the Status of Women. And we look forward to hearing updates from this meeting at the VCS Forum. So once again, uh, congratulations on all the work you do. And um, uh, do, do come back to us uh, with the new updates uh, soon. Thank you. Also from with us today, uh, we have Mr. Benoit Louvel, who is a service design front office director from the customer service and operations of the Orange Business Services. Welcome, Benoit. Your latest action is to develop uh, the positioning of women within Orange Group, and in particular on B2B market within Orange Business Services. It is very important for us to hear the experiences from the private sector on this uh, issue of gender mainstreaming. 
And we would like to hear from you. Are there any new activities put in place recently to achieve your objective? So hi, everyone. Uh, nice to see all of you. Uh, yes, uh, there are new activities, but just uh, uh, there is an activity next week that is very dear to me because next week is International Day against uh, to fight against women uh, on women against um, on sorry on violence against women. Uh, so uh, we are organizing uh, an event on this day in order also to make it visible uh, the violence is against women. So I think it's an important step also for equity and equality to show also the different uh, constraints that women have to face on their day-to-day -day life. So this is, I think, one of the first points to help women is also to help uh, them to see that sometimes it's the environment that is uh, playing a role on what they can or cannot do and that we can always go further and fight what's uh, inequitable in, uh, in this world. So this is the first thing. Second thing is, yes, we are organizing very, uh, every month we are organizing um, workshops in order to support women to uh, understand how to handle uh, VUCA environment. Uh, so which uh, we all face uh, today uh, where everything is, um, unstable changing in particular in technologies. So uh, we have to adapt to that. And uh, so we are giving uh, uh, workshops in order to support, to define what, what are the objectives of people in this environment. But there are also different um, activities related to how to handle private and work life balance, how to, uh, and also uh, uh, activities that might be uh, time consuming uh, sometimes at work and uh, still keep some time for oneself. Uh, so are, so those are some of the activities that we do that are more oriented to women. And then there are activities that are larger where we involve men because it's so, so important to develop place of women to make men understand what they have to do and what they can gain also to the development of women uh, in a, a company like Orange, for example. So we are also organizing workshops uh, on diversity and what diversity brings, what uh, diversity, it's not only of course of gender, but in particular on gender diversity, what it brings to teams in terms of efficiency, in terms of new ideas, in terms also of transformation, because uh, it is key to have different uh, gender and cultures, of course, in order to evolve and to make a company evolve. And uh, that's what we are working on. So um, one uh, last point, I think, is we are also supporting sometimes uh, outside activities, working with other companies, such as uh, um, other STEM industries. I won't uh, say all the name, but within France, we are working in uh, in coordination with other companies in order to develop this. And we have events that we organize, for example, in January and uh, March next year with different companies uh, where the theme uh, of, uh, of the, those two events are around developing the place of women in all our companies, le uh, getting some feedbacks on, uh, on good things that are done by the different companies and trying to see how we can adapt it to different uh, environments, different cultures of enterprise. And I think this is also key to have some lessons learned between companies and to see what some have tried, things that are not working sometimes, because we can also have things that are not working and, and uh, first attempt in learning uh, is always good. Uh, a fail uh, is not a fail when it's used. So it's uh, uh, it's key, I think, uh, that we are also learning from different companies and that's what I would conclude on. Thank you, thank you, Benoit. It's great to hear the many activities uh, that you lead and other colleagues from Orange. It's also great to hear that you have these synergies with other companies, that private sector is uh, 
together in this uh, effort, learning from each other. And we would love to hear more at um, the UN level uh, from, from you. So please uh, do consider uh, bringing the outcomes of your workshops uh, and all the studies that you do uh, back to the VISIS Forum uh, in March. We would love to welcome you and your other colleagues to present um, what uh, are, you know, what are the challenges and what are the opportunities uh, based on your experiences. So once again, thank you for joining us today. Uh, Tala would like no, to- I just wanted to congratulate Benoit and the Orange Business Services team on the appointment of a new woman CEO of Orange Business Services. She was recently appointed, so we're really happy to see that uh, women are uh, breaking the glass ceiling and getting uh, appointed at uh, executive uh, positions at uh, Orange Business Services. And we are proud. Yes. Great, wonderful. We, we see more and more uh, women decision makers uh, taking uh, their uh, place, taking their places, uh, rightly so. And um, of course, uh, we will in continue to encourage uh, this trend not only on decision-making uh, level, but uh, on all levels, uh, operational. And as uh, a colleague from UNESCO, David, mentioned, uh, everything starts from education. So all the efforts that we can put into promoting uh, girls in STEM, uh, girls in ICTs, a lot of these things are happening at the ITU for many, many years. Uh, following the VISIS Forum, we will have another uh, International Girls in ICT Day and many other things that we are uh, contributing towards the same goal. So once again, I believe uh, we should be look, you know, learning from each other and putting these synergies together and presenting them at the VISIS Forum being such a wide and global platform. Our next speaker will share a bit uh, of the stories from the ground. Uh, different region, different ground, different environments. Uh, Ms. Natalia Rodionova, founder of Sisters of Code and IT Academy, Step uh, Cambodia. Uh, so, as you know, since we first met, we've been hearing amazing stories uh, from the ground in Cambodia on all the gender initiatives uh, and ICTs. Uh, perhaps, uh, Natalia, you can update us on what are the news and highlights uh, that are ongoing or something that has been finalized or planned. Please, Natalia. Thank you so much for the introduction and uh, giving me this opportunity to share today uh, from Cambodia. That is quite a late evening already here. Uh, so uh, I'm happy to um, share the news that uh, Sisters of Code has been doing uh, for the past uh, several months. And it was very busy, busy time for us since uh, we work in education as many other panelists today have highlighted the importance of education. So this area requires a lot of work. Uh, in Cambodia, only 10% of female students choose to study technology. So it's male dominated and we are trying to change the situation. Um, that's why uh, this uh, year we have tried a very new approach and I would like to share uh, the findings we have, uh, which may be helpful to everyone else working in the community development and education. So we focused on creating an ambassador's network, a training of trainers, and it is not only about technical skills, but also about personal leadership skills for female students who want to volunteer their time and spread the message and run coding clubs in their communities. So it's kind of girls supporting girls and that allowed us to grow in, in Cambodia a very fast pace and one, now we are represented in 16 provinces. So if uh, two, two, three years ago, we've been only presented in one city, now we are in 16 provinces, which is absolutely incredible opportunity for girls to join the coding clubs we have. I also believe that this peer-to-peer -peer training um, allowed us to bring uh, to the spotlight most motivated and engaged students as well as stay relevant to the young generation. Sometimes uh, if we look at the school system, which is very um, traditional and uh, often lacks resources and also delivers the lessons in an instructive 
uh, way. Uh, it not always works. So when you have young people who can become uh, like trainers and share what they know and engage into the educational activities, it really uh, works. So I would like to encourage everyone who is working in the field of education while addressing gender issues, consider reviewing uh, the educational framework and see if peers to peers approach can be implemented. It really worked for us. Uh, and uh, I believe that innovation and creativity uh, is so important, such important areas to be explored in education and make sure that we serve the purpose of uh, de developing skills for our students in the best way. Uh, so I also thought uh, by, by having those uh, training of trainers and bringing girls to become ambassadors and start the clubs, uh, we also boosted their self-confidence and uh, what we also have achieved that some of them even got scholarships abroad uh, that uh, they didn't thought about before, but since they have became, uh, became involved in the community work, they were more confident, they tried uh, other things, and so it helped them to get in Korea, UK, Japan, and uh, also inspire other students to see uh, how to expand the educational um, uh, pathways uh, beyond uh, what Cambodia can offer. Um, yeah, so that is one thing that I really want to share today. Another thing that I want to mention that um, somebody already told today about the day of uh, girls in ICT, which is happening in April. We had that in Cambodia and that was really an outstanding opportunity to kind of join virtually the global community. So if you uh, work with uh, women or work with girls, uh, uh, check this out. This is a great event and I'm very uh, thankful for ITU uh, supporting the event uh, with different um, promotional communicational materials. Another uh, point that I would like to mention, and it was an interesting experiment for uh, Sisters of Code in Cambodia. So Cambodia is a developing country and uh, we have very limited access to IT companies here. So we had a chance to bring a group of students to Singapore to visit uh, um, IT companies, NTT, NCS Next, Google, Adobe, Informatica. So kind of get them uh, feel what does it mean to work uh, in that area, meet people and uh, talk to them. And this um, uh, opportunity to connect to the private sector actually was amazing uh, learning experience. Um, because I do believe as an educator that uh, learning doesn't happen only in the classroom. It happens like uh, everything through everything we do. And those educational trips are really important for the students so they can experience um, how, what does it mean to be working in that field. For the girls who joined our trip, it was like uh, life changing, really. For many, it was flying for the first time, uh, going to the companies for the first time, even taking a bus for the first time, because here we use motorbikes mostly. And we could see how technology ha is implemented to support um, lifestyle of people, like even like, you know, uh, tap in and tap out uh, in the bus or, and discussing how data is being collected to plan uh, traffic uh, in Singapore. Uh, that helped us to inspire curiosity and creativity with our students. Then uh, they were asking, so how does it work? How can I apply it in my country? And and that is the best motivation I could think of as an educator to make sure that they see the practical application of the digital skills. Um, yeah, so uh, that those are kind of the main things I wanted to share today to summarize my key learnings over this period of time. I think that tech skills development um, should be more innovative and creative. Um, about how do we deliver this learning experience to the students and make sure it's relevant for them, engaging, and she may be putting attention only on conventional schooling, but expand it to learning engagements through different touch points, like I mentioned, educational trips or events or peer-to-peer -peer training. 
and collapse. Uh, and uh, to the final message I would like to share that I believe that staying true to the cause and focusing on the outcomes, as well as overthinking about the needs and the dreams of the students we want to support is the key. We have to remember that we are here to help them uh, to be more successful in the future. So thank you so much. Thank you, Natalia, for sharing this uh, with us. We do believe that capacity building opportunities are, can always be seen as the life-changing opportunities. So all the, um, the different courses, uh, lectures, uh, studies that you are providing to the community in Cambodia, uh, as we would like to also see at the Business Forum in March, so please uh, use the opportunity uh, as the VCS gender trendsetter to also discuss other opportunities that are taking place at the VCS forum. Uh, let's celebrate uh, some of those successes back at the VCS forum through the VCS prizes and uh, all other options that you have. And we'd like to connect uh, with some of your students, perhaps since now we are you know, running a, a hybrid uh, event, uh, fully uh, remote participation enabled. Let's let's hear back from them. Let's celebrate uh, their uh, advancement, uh, the new perspectives that they have. So please uh, uh, come back to us. So we'd like to hear more uh, on, on these individual uh, opportunities and invite all of them to be a business stakeholder, a uh, full member of the business community. Uh, also with us is uh, Ms. Elena Estavillo Flores, uh, CEO of Centro y Para la Sociedad del Futuro. Uh, welcome, uh, Elena, once again. Uh, we have had pleasure to also have you as uh, one of the VCS Prize champions. It's, it's great, really, that um, we have you on board uh, to get to today with us as well. We'd like to ask you, why is it important to address gender digital inclusion with a systematic approach? What does it you really stand for? And what are the outcomes that you believe uh, can be uh, a result of such a systematic approach. Yes, hello, hello, very, very glad, happy to be here again with you. Well, I believe that in fact, gender perspective is a systemic approach. Uh, we have been, um, and um, a systemic approach um, because it takes into account uh, structural factors that affect uh, the way in which we relate uh, women, men, uh, different groups um, in a way that responds to structural conditions. And gender perspective, in fact, is a systemic approach. And we have been working to infuse both approaches, this uh, gender perspective, a systemic approach, in policy making, in regulation, in legislation, uh, for example, by training legislators and regulators in these methodologies, also in promoting intelligent cities with, uh, in addition to being digital, have to be feminist, inclusive, resilient, efficient, because uh, we believe that cities that solve problems for women will solve problems for the entire society. And we have developed uh, a, uh, our site, in fact, is called feministcity.org. We also launched a citizen-led initiative for national digital transformation strategy that has a systemic approach with a gender transversal, transversal component. Um, we have been partnering in Mexico with uh, UNESCO to put in action the recommendation and ethics in, in artificial intelligence putting in special emphasis on countering gender biases, which also calls on producing more gender data that we are lacking. And uh, also uh, one, one thing that I find very interesting um, is that, uh, well, in fact, I, I have been working as an expert for United Nations Women in preparation of next year's session at the Commission on the Status of Women because uh, next year it will center on innovation and technological change and also in education in the digital age for achieving gender equality and the empowerment of all, all women and girls. And I believe that this is a great opportunity to work together we, uh, at gen as gender transsetters 
um, with uh, United Nations women and make synergies. And these all are different approaches, but basically are the same. This is a systemic approach uh, to gender uh, digital divides because all uh, these gender divides are fed by structural conditions. And, and I mean formal, informal rules, prejudice, stereotypes, social representations, discriminatory behaviors, and all this cause systemic exclusion. These are not accidents. And with every technological advance, there appears a, a new dimension of the gender divide. We don't only have now internet gender divide, but gender divide for artificial intelligence, uh, for access to big data, uh, to digital uh, di financial inclusion. And this happens because the underlying system that creates disadvantages for women, it remains mostly untouched. And if we continue on the same path, we will face, for example, 5G gender divide, a metaverse divide, and whatever comes afterwards. Um, general policies that are conceived without regard to these structural conditions are not enough to reverse inequality and to close divides. And um, so a systemic approach is one that aims at reversing the causes of structural gender discrimination and of power imbalances. For example, um, elderly women need digital skills, relevant content that is designed for their needs, for their interests, and uh, very easy to use mobile devices and services. Um, we have uh, been witnessing that many e-banking actions have been excluding uh, the elderly and uh, particularly uh, elderly women, not only from digital services, but from banking and financial services that they already had access to. Why? Because they do not consider structural difficulties. For example, the fact that our fingerprints vanish with age. So when you require this kind of validation, you exclude systematically the elderly. Uh, we know that girls, young women, and also female activists and journalists uh, require tackling digital violence. Uh, that is uh, aggressions that distance them from technology or puts them in danger. For example, from human trafficking networks, pornography, criminal groups, they need to learn configuration skills so they can protect their privacy and, and their security. And also actions that insert them into ICT as creators of platforms, of content and applications that will be relevant and useful for them. Um, inclusive artificial intelligence needs inclusive teams working on algorithms, but also data that reflects women's needs and preferences and we also need that funding is directed to women-led teams and to gender-oriented projects. Um, gender, gender digital divides cannot disappear if we don't tackle these underlying structural causes that keep women and girls disconnected. Um, so it's necessary to design public policies to address the needs and preference of women, we know that but also the difficulties they experience to gain access to the digital ecosystem. That, that is not only to help uh, the target group of, group of women and girls to overcome obstacles, but to eliminate them permanently. So other women and girls in the future or in other contexts will not face the same challenges and be left behind. And, and, and that is why our emphasis on this systemic approach. Thank you, Elena. Um, I cannot agree more that we need to work together on using the correct policy making, advancing to the advanced issues. I see a lot of our gender testers are involved in the work of the of the um, uh, Commission on the Status of Women, uh, contributing to it. Uh, I believe uh, we should all be working together uh, as this is gender center community in seeing how we can approach, have a civil, you know, a, a unified approach to it as well. Uh, one of these synergies, uh, as you know, maybe uh, our participants uh, remember, was in 2010 of the establishment of UN Women. Uh, that uh, prior to that uh, was kind of scattered throughout uh, the UN system. 
from the division of the development of women to UNIFEM, the fund for development of women to the special office of UNSG office for the special advisor on these issues. So, you know, this was a great result. And I think uh, the UN Women is doing a tremendous job. Uh, we do uh, want to mention that they are also one of the uh, facilitators of the VISIS process with, him, with whom we work very, very closely. Thank you again. Uh, good luck with the rest of your work. We look forward to hearing from you in the future uh, and to see how we can, you know, really have a unified voice at the next meeting of the CSW. Our next speaker uh, is uh, Ms. Susanna Arcea. Digital Community Center Project Director from the New Sun Road. Welcome again. Uh, we've been celebrating the work of uh, your community um, efforts. Uh, always very inspiring to hear from you. Uh, what have you achieved lately with the Digital Community Centers for the Rural Indigenous Population? Thank you very much uh, for the invitation. I'm very glad to share uh, this information with you. We are now not only 10 digital community centers, but 20 and going to 30 very soon. Um, we install and train uh, uh, more than 200 indigenous women in digital skills and provided digital services to more than 3,000 people living in underserved communities, as you can see in the video. Uh, we are going to these communities that don't have access to electricity, and we are maximizing their potential uh, by installing this uh, technology and by providing training, education, and allowing women to manage these centers and be they become entrepreneurial. Uh, uh, they become this center as their own entrepreneurial activity. So we have a yeah, different approach. Um, First is a need and community-based solution. Uh, so we conduct uh, group interviews and service and economic gender uh, uh, knowledge so to tailor uh, the solution. Uh, we teach not only digital and entrepreneurial skills, but also leadership and financial, that it's very important. And we um, support the women's political empowerment by creating a women's leadership committee uh, with uh, the Snowflake model and the leadership um, methodology of Professor uh, Marshall Gans from Harvard. Uh, we also establish uh, these women-led digital community centers uh, with more than uh, now 88% uh, of their income has been increasing thanks to the support of the local team. Uh, everything is in the local Mayan language in Kekchi and now uh, in Chuk. And soon we will have more uh, content in Ishil. As you know, we are very diverse in Guatemala with more than 22 Mayan language. And uh, so we have different strategic collaborations. And one of the, the most important things that I want to highlight is that they are using uh, high technology or stellar integrated systems uh, come with uh, our own uh, software uh, platform of monitor and control. And that has been uh, recently selected as um, the managed uh, platform for PG&E. Uh, this, this is the biggest uh, utility company in California, and uh, we are uh, doing all their standalone systems with this technology, as you can see, with these women to manage the, the, the centers, but not only the computers, also the power systems. Um, they learn uh, how to um, create a business model with uh, a lot of uh, feedback from the community. Uh, so we follow the five uh, steps of design thinking. We have been uh, doing a lot of progress with this. And I'm very excited to, to share that we are um, going forward to achieve 5,000 digital community centers in the next five years, and uh, hopefully uh, engage with more than um, 500,000 indigenous women around Guatemala. Thank you. Thank you, Susanna, so much. Uh, it's uh, a great pleasure to be together with you on this road. Uh, we look forward to promoting the work you do uh, and the success from the ground. We do invite you, but everyone else, all other gender tensetters, to really use the opportunities at the VISIS Forum and the VISIS Prizes. The new ones, uh, particularly on this, Susanna, on the indigenous languages that we are about to launch. Uh, we'd love to uh, have you uh, pr promote and present this work, uh, the use of uh, technologies to preserve and uh, revitalize uh, peoples and culture, indigenous peoples and cultures. 
So please come back to us. Uh, we will be uh, more than happy to, uh, to promote the, the work that you do. Once again, thanks for joining us um, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Our next speaker, we have two more. Uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, we are just about uh, one hour since we started the session. Thanks for, uh, of course, uh, the time that you have allocated uh, for this important session and topic. Uh, together with us today is also Ms. Uh, Vidya Y, co-founder and trustee of the Vision in Power. Welcome, Vidya. Uh, you have chosen to motivate girls and women with and without disabilities, and also enhance digital skills for girls and women with visual impairments as your pledge. Tell us more about your latest work, uh, and uh, of course, congratulations on your nomination for the national awards, uh, which are given on the International Day of Persons with Disabilities on the 3rd of December. Yes, thank you so much, and I'm really excited to share the late, latest updates. I think I've shared the statistics earlier also that we have about 285 million people with visual impairments and uh, one third of them live in India. And out of that, we just have a handful of people who have studied STEM related subjects beyond high school. So this is the reason why I have started my own organization, Vision Empowered. So we don't have just one solution. We address the STEM issue from a holistic perspective. So based on this, we found that there are few main problems that are there. Firstly, the content is very visual and there are not enough technologies that are available and affordable. And also the teachers are not trained enough to teach children with visual impairment. So for this reason, we have various initiatives. Uh, first is we have a lot of learning resources. We make everything accessible, including all the visual materials. So we provide tactile supplements wherever necessary. We also have 3D models. And uh, we have computational thinking project with Microsoft Research where everything is taught in a play-based manner. We have conducted 970 sessions so far. We have teacher trainings to empower teachers with visual impairments and without visual impairment to teach STEM education, to teach STEM subjects to children with visual impairments. And we have conducted 26 trainings so far. So we have been working with about um, 1,200 students and 480 teachers in 90 schools across 11, 11 states or provinces in India. So coming to my pledge, um, I have pledged to work on digital literacy. So, so far we have about, uh, I have created about 155 audio tutorials which have been translated in four languages in total. And uh, we have regular sessions, my team is taking these uh, digital literacy tutorials to various states. And regarding my motivation, um, motivational talks, so I have attended various conferences and also motivated people with and without disabilities. Some of the key conferences that I've attended is the digital, uh, the disability leadership conference in Dhaka that was organized. Uh, I have also given few corporate talks at CGI and Michelin and also presented my work at Intuit University of Toronto. And um, we have had a lot of media coverages in national newspapers and also I've received two awards for my work. So th these have been the latest updates. Thank you, Vidya. And again, congratulations on all, all the work that you have achieved. I mean, all the communities that you have reached out to this is really a, an amazing effort and we would love to uh, continue promoting your work, but also the work of all other gender 10 setters. I invite all of you to share any updates uh, in advance so that we can all also contribute uh, and promote uh, your particular activities, sessions that we can uh, actively participate and attend some of them uh, if possible, if not uh, physically, at least through the virtual opportunities that are now more and more available. Our uh, final speaker for today, uh, very happy to uh, welcome Ms. Gabdibe, National Coordinator uh, from Acción por la Educación y la Promoción de la Femme from Chad. 
What is your organization's latest contribution to digital gender inclusion? If you can share some updates uh, on this, please. You are on mute, uh, Ms. Gabdibe. If you can turn on your microphone. Yes. Um, hello, can, can I speak in French? Yes, please go ahead. <laughs> uh, bonjour tout le monde. Uh, je m'appelle Gabdibe, je suis la coordinatrice uh, d'une organisation de la société civile qui milite pour uh, l'autonomisation uh, de, la, de la fille et de la femme d'une manière générale. Et ce que nous faisons actuellement, c'est que nous faisons un travail de sensibilisation, un travail de formation des filles, et surtout les filles du secondaire. Euh, et nous, nous avons aussi, euh, bon, je vais aller très brièvement, nous avons aussi un projet de, à, à l'endroit des filles pour euh, leur permettre de, de pouvoir non seulement consommer euh, les produits euh, faits par d'autres, on aimerait que les filles soient aussi capables d'être des actrices, c'est-à-dire qu'elles produisent grâce à l'Internet pour résoudre les problèmes qui sont spécifiques aux filles. Donc, le travail que nous faisons en ce moment, c'est un travail de sensibilisation et sensibilisation aussi pour, par rapport à, au problème de l'insécurité en ligne. Parce que nous sommes rendus compte que les filles euh, sont parfois, elles n'ont pas la possibilité d'être suivies sur les, les réseaux sociaux et autres. Parce que quelquefois, les parents même ne maîtrisent pas l'Internet, parce qu'il faut, faut reconnaître que le taux d'accès à l'Internet et d'utilisation de l'Internet au Tchad est très, très, très faible. Donc, c'est ça qui fait que, euh, sur le plan euh, éducation, les parents n'arrivent pas à accompagner les enfants dans l'utilisation euh, de l'Internet pour, le, pour les prévenir des dangers qu peut, que les jeunes peuvent avoir dans l'utilisation de l'Internet. Donc, notre travail c'est de former ces filles, former les jeunes à, à faire attention dans leur utilisation de l'Internet. Donc, euh, c'est à peu près ce, ce que nous faisons, mais le projet que nous avons ces derniers temps, c'est de pouvoir avoir des données sur, sur euh, l'utilisation de l'Internet. Ça veut dire que quels sont les, 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 les jeunes, les jeunes l'utilisation de l'Internet par les jeunes et l'utilisation de l'Internet par les filles, voire lesquels qui utilisent et qu quels sont leurs domaines de prédilection. Et puis, voir aussi, est-ce que est, cette activité sur Internet, est-ce que ça, ça permet aux filles d'améliorer aussi leurs résultats scolaires, etc. etc. Donc, euh, nous sommes aussi en train de travailler sur ça. Comme euh, toutes les interventions étaient en, en anglais, malheureusement pour moi, je n'ai pas pu tout capter. Mais j'ai vu que je crois que je ne sais plus c'est dans quel pays c'est suis là où c'est quel. Il y, a un, il y a une formation dans le codage informatique. Ah, voilà, je ne sais plus c'est quelle intervention, mais j'aimerais aussi qu'il y ait euh, cet échange de, de, de bonnes pratiques aussi pour qu'on puisse partager les. Parce que chez nous, on n'a pas, pas beaucoup de. de d'expérience dans le domaine des codages et mais c'est un domaine qui m'intéresse particulièrement. Voilà à peu près ce que nous faisons dans le domaine de enfin, ce que nous faisons comme organisation. Thank you, thank you so much. Merci beaucoup uh, Gabdibé pour uh, votre intervention. I will just summarize some of the key points you've mentioned. So Gabdibé is uh, the coordinator of an organization that tries uh, for the empowerment of women and girls. Uh, she recently organizes uh, trainings for high school girls, uh, and she works on a project to help girls use digital technologies, but not only as end users, but also um, help them be the leaders and try to code themselves uh, these um, activities and try to learn by themselves and to be more active uh, in the digital society. So um, she also is involved in cybersecurity courses 
to sensitize them on this topic as parents are not well prepared to assist them in using uh, the internet safely. Uh, and finally, she's working also to gather data because this is what we usually lack uh, to collect, uh, have more data on the internet used by the youth and specifically by uh, girls. And she uh, looked forward to working, I believe, with Yvette and Susanna on uh, other trainings that would address uh, girls uh, and women and uh, on the specific topic uh, of coding. So uh, thank you so much, Gab Dibé. Uh, I know that uh, you could not follow. Uh, Gab Dibé, je sais que vous n'avez pas pu peut-être uh, uh, avoir toutes les informations de la session. Uh, si vous souhaitez, on peut essayer de, la, de traduire quelques points qui vous intéressent et vous nous, nous vous les enverrons uh, uh, par mail. Donc, uh, ne vous inquiétez pas, on essaiera de, de le faire. Merci beaucoup. Merci, Madame Gabdibé. Thank you, Tala, and thank uh, to all of the panelists and uh, attendees for uh, the session today. Um, we are reaching the end of it. Uh, we do have a video message from Ms. Kirti Jayakumar, a coder and creator from Saha's organization, who are developing a tech-based early warning mechanism for conflict-related sexual violence. However, due to the respect of the time allocated for this session, we will be uploading this video message on the dedicated web page of this VCIS and SDG talks on the VCIS Forum website and invite you all to um, review it and promote further on the activities and the recording of this session. And as uh, for the final message, I would like to invite Gitanjali uh, to, to close the session and give us some uh, you know, top points for the future work of the group. Thank you so much, Vladimir. And uh, thank you to all the gender trendsetters uh, for continuing your wonderful uh, work. Uh, it was really nice to hear uh, about all the updates. And one update from our side is also that uh, uh, the United Nations Group on Information Society, UNGIS, uh, has submitted a joint contribution to CSW as well as to how the 32 uh, UN agencies who are part of UNGIS are contributing to the digital gender inclusion and uh, so um, Davide from UNESCO uh, has been a part of this as well as a, a vice chair of ONGES. So this is uh, an important update and uh, uh, Vladimir and Tala have already informed you that we will have a special track on uh, ICTs uh, and gender uh, uh, empowerment. So uh, we should already start planning. Uh, we encourage the gender trendsetters to already start planning um, what we would like to do at the business forum and what outputs do we want to see. Um, so let's have some con concrete outputs maybe as a group. Um, we know that all of you are doing a lot of work uh, individually, but concretely maybe we could uh, come up with uh, one uh, uh, output. And of course, uh, uh, Susanna, we wanted to ask you uh, how your baby was doing because last time you were about to uh, have a baby. <laughs> so, um, oh, how cute is that? That was so sweet. So it's really nice to see a youth delegate in this meeting <laughs> as well. <laughs> so thank you so much and look forward to planning with all of you uh, towards the Visis Forum uh, 2023 in uh, March. Um, there is a hand raised. Let me just see. Um, I asked my colleague. It's you, Maylin. Okay. Yes, go yes. ahead, Maylin. Please. Go ahead. I just wanted to give input. Um, I was a co-chair for the UN Commission on Status of Women for the Asia Pacific, Europe, Africa, and Middle East. And then I was just at GIZ in Germany yes, uh, last week, and they supported my proposal that we should have a tracking platform so we can track if the countries are implementing the recommendations. And so I look forward to how we could develop this further within the WISIS process and discuss mm -hmm. how, how that could work. Excellent uh, idea, Milin, and we will continue to uh, work on this. I think uh, one of the ways uh, we've seen that uh, by establishment of UN Women, they have also increased the capacity to have a UN Women officers in a lot of uh, uh, offices of UN around the world. So perhaps, 
you know, their presence there will help them track uh, some of the issues. But this is forum having uh, stakeholders everywhere, not only in the capitals and the UN offices, uh, could be a very good mechanism also for tracking. So please, uh, Maylin, if you can, you know, elaborate on this uh, a bit more towards the, you know, uh, this is forum to, so we can, you know, open this discussion up and see how we can uh, set this up. This will be very, very important. But thank you for, for sharing. Great. I, I will let my German colleagues know about the interest and I will see what we can do to pull, pull it forward. Thank you so Great. much, Melin. And uh, you with uh, the game you were talking about, uh, maybe we can also use it uh, in the gender repository that we have. We have more than 100 uh, women right now out there, women and girls. So we could explore how we could do a training session uh, in through the gender repository in the coming months. Yes, uh, thank you. Well, just one, one thing is it has to be a physical meeting. So if during the visits you've got 100 okay. Uh, ladies, we can gather in 25 because it's by four, 25 groups Perfect. together with my colleagues, with yourself, etc. We can train them. This is no problem. I have I enough kids to kids, I mean, games to during one hour and something to present that. Of course, with kids, you need at least two to three hours because it takes more time. But with uh, all our colleagues, one hour, one hour, one hour, 15 it to be enough. Yes. And Should I have a question I put in the chat about PSAW at UN Women. Do you know how many gender trendsetters will be there? Because I'm trying to be there, as I said, I think I will be there towards the end of the two weeks. Uh, so it would be really fantastic if you, if you can go there and, you know, actually demonstrate do. Mm -hmm. uh, you bet it's a very good idea. What we could do as well is uh, we can anyway have a versus talks at that time um, and we could kind of link it, uh, popularize it with the hashtag of CSW and uh, mail in. You're quite clued in about the process, so you can also assist us. We can ask our colleagues from UN Women as well. So we could plan something around that time, but I believe it is also close to the business forum. So please plan accordingly. Don't miss the business forum. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> that is why. Yes, you're right. I was planning to be here. It is the same week, 13, 14, oh, okay. the business. And at the end of that week, I'll be in New York. Uh, yeah, they didn't yeah, match the times, but I will be at both. No, so, but let's, let's do the opportunity. Yeah. We could still align maybe some of our gender trendsetter work during uh, the business forum and link it with CSW. So we look forward to your uh, advice and guidance. Perhaps have a meeting of the gender trendsetters present there and we can help uh, remotely from Geneva and our colleagues from the ITU's office in New York can also support. Uh, we should get a room and, you know, see what we can do. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting for the coffee in Geneva. Yes. <laughs> Explain that. <laughs> no worries. Okay. Okay. Anytime. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, colleagues, we'll close now. We are already late. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Bye -bye. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Bye. Thank pleasure. you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.